Hello and welcome back to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. Uh, so I have today a Precision Power PPI 2150. This is the Revision C board that is in for repair. So as with any amplifier, uh, the first thing I do is I check for shorted power supply transistors and shorted output transistors. I'm going to just measure the resistance of the uh, gate and source of the power supply transistors here. So the gate and source uh, for one side, so we got 1.2K, 83 ohms, 1.2K, 1.2K, and 1.2K. So this one uh, from gate source of 83 ohms is definitely something I would pull out of the circuit to see if it clears out this drain to source direct short. On both sides, I have a, a direct short drain to source. Uh, so I will mark this transistor here for removal. And I'm just going to go through and check the other side of the transformer here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to have five and five. Uh, this is an SG3525, just uh, as a note here, what's driving the uh, power supply. So what I have here, 1.2. Okay, so I'm going to test the other side here. The other five is the other side of the transformer. So 2.8K, 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 and 2.8K. So that's telling me these five here, just from an... Uh, rough initial diagnostic is that these are fine it's going to be this one that has a, a short to the gate of 82 ohms right was that what it was 82 ohms uh yes 84 ohms to gate source so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pull that transistor off real quick uh, with the hacko the 808 um, and remove that transistor and see if it clears up my short and just as a note, general note for boards like this, uh, Orion has boards like this, PPI has these, but when they lay the transistor leg legs flat on the board, it's really easy on these older boards to pull these traces up. So you got to be real careful on the heat that you use. Um, and if you have an iron that's really hot, what I would suggest doing is just using some uh, low temp solder in these spots just to help preserve the traces of the board. Uh, so I'm gonna pull that transistor, be right back with you guys. All right, I've returned. So I, I removed that uh, transistor with the good old SRA fast chip. Excellent stuff. It really does, as, as I said, help preserve the pads of these older boards. So I removed that transistor this one right here so I'm just gonna do a quick check of the transistor so I'll be right back with you so I'm back with this precision power board I pulled all the power supply transistors because I was still showing a zero ohm between a drain source but not any changes in resistance from the gate to source which was odd So I pulled all those out and I tested them. They all test good. So I must have had a charge somewhere in here on the, one of the gates, which obviously when you have a charge on a gate, it'll close your drain and source. Uh, Cause now I don't have a short across your drain, the drain and source. And I'm about, uh, so I'm about 2.8 K from uh, gate source so which is looking right 2.8 2.8 on each side coming from this uh, sg3525 so i do believe that 
I just had some static charge probably on a gate that was closing it. Um, I'm not seeing an issue why I would show a zero ohm across the drain and source. So uh, that's what I'm going to go with is I just had some static charge. I do have to replace all five of one of the banks on the power supply. Again, I don't replace just one. I always make sure any work I do on an amplifier, if they're in parallel, the they are always matched. So I will, will have to replace five of these uh, P25NO5s. So I'm just uh, going to hook up some power and see what we got on the uh, power supply drive. All right, so I hooked up my 12 volts uh, to check the drain and source, make sure I had 12 volts on the pads uh, of the source and the drains. So, so on the drains here, I do have the 12 volts coming from, uh, coming from the power supply. So I noticed though that I have drive on, uh, on the gate pads when the remote power is not even hooked up so what i'm going to be doing is looking for a circuit here that's controlling this sg3525 it's probably going to be a transistor uh, most all remote circuits are run through a transistor but again this isn't even hooked up so i'm assuming it's going to be a transistor oh i do have a transistor here that has actually been squished down let me try to pull that transistor up and see if that resolves the issue here there we go so all three legs now are free make sure no other transistors are squished to the point of having any legs touching so let's go ahead and fire that back up and see oh look i don't have drive anymore so it was just q42 here that was squished down to a point where the legs were uh shorting together um turning the sg3525 on so looks like we're good there i'm going to go ahead and connect uh, my remote So my remote power is connected and let's just go ahead and test the foot pedal here. And there it is. Drive is present with the remote. So we're looking pretty good. Um, again, the power supply transistors, they all read good. The, besides the one that obviously was shorted. So I'm going to go ahead and um place in a couple transistors on each side i don't have to put them all back in uh, just to test the power supply although it's always a good uh, practice a good idea to check your outputs before you fire up the power supply because you don't want to cook any of the transistors you just installed into the power supply so let me just check the outputs real quick Oh, no, we do have shorted uh, output. So here, let me uh, just do a quick audio of the uh, outputs. So it looks like we have one side that is Yeah, it looks like we do have quite a few that are shown short. And again, what we'll do is we'll just use the resistance mode to verify which transistors are shorted. And these are uh, 2N6490s. 2N6490s. It looks like they're all 2N... Uh, oh, here we got 2N6487s. 
So two N sixty four eighty sevens and two N sixty four nineties on the output. So what we'll have to do is determine which ones of these are bad. So I'm reading a uh, point. I'm reading. Yeah, 46 ohms. From the base to the emitter, 46 ohms. Uh, let's see if we can find one that's got a little lower resistance than that. 46, 8, 46, 8, 46, 8, 46, 9, 46, 9, 46, 9. One of these is going to be. Uh, 160k, 7k, 46, 47. One of these is going to be shorted. Oh, there it is. 0.7 ohms. So this one here is a 0.7 ohms. 0.3 ohms, 0.7, so this one's a 0.3, so again, I'll just take the marker and I'm going to just mark that transistor because it's got the lowest resistance so far, 0.7, 7K, so this one here more than likely is going to be shorted. And it's shorted between all three legs. 0.8 and 6. It could be these two right here. So what I'll do is take these two out. And this is the 6490s. So what I'll do is I will remove these two and check again for uh, shorts. All right, so what I have done is I have removed the two shorted transistors that I suspected were shorted. Uh, one was shorted and one was still good. Uh, so that frees up the output section. I was reading that 47 ohms. I traced it back and it's because they're using 47 ohm resistors uh, across the uh, pre-drive transistors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fire up the power supply here and see what kind of drive signal we have here. So as you can see on the scope, we do have uh, the power supply drive on both sides. I'm just going to make sure that the transistors aren't heating up. They're not. They are just slightly warm so again it does look like we have good power supply drive and i'm just going to make sure i don't have any uh stray lingering voltage on the output it is pulling just a little bit below uh, below zero i should say just pulling just a little bit on the outputs a little bit below zero it could be the way it's biased um, but what we'll do is see if we have a green power green, or a red light i'm sorry a red oh, you can't quite see it a red led here and we do we do have a red led shining so it's telling me that we do have good power here coming in and i do have the output transistors are good. No heat, no heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an input signal in. Uh, my common 50 Hertz. Just gonna introduce an input signal here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just see 
I may have to change my ground source here. Just give me two seconds here. Oh yeah, okay. So, and as you can see, let me... We do have a signal on the base of the output transistors. Uh, 50.1 hertz at 9 volts, looking good there. 51.5 hertz at 9 volts, looking good there. So as you can see, it does look like we do have a good drive, a good power supply, a good output. I'm just going to check the speaker leads here. Looking good. And I do have the 50 hertz. Gain, the gain works. And it looks fairly clean when you rotate the gain. I don't see any odd uh, disfiguring of the sine wave. So, looks like we're doing pretty good. Uh, I do have to order in some 25NO5s and some new uh, 6490s for the output over here and then this amp will be good to go again i do thank you for watching i know we didn't go into a lot of detail on the output section or the preamp section uh, but we did cover quite a few details of uh, proper care of these flat pads and that's why these power supply transistors i solder just to the end of the pad it really does reduce the heat that you apply to the pad to remove these because of course i again i always do uh, matched banks um and then of course the we went over the uh, remote circuit so that takes care of this ppi 2150 for you again i do thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you have any comments please leave them down below I will see you on the next video.